I'm very aware with um, a very short time like this that we're just scratching the surface. I hope that the four sheets of paper you've got here will be really useful for you. Um, and just to say that we're not going to go into what might be described as apologetics, having a reason for our faith, um, we're just going to be able to today explore how we express our faith and how we express how we came to faith. Do you follow me? So if, if somebody says, but what about suffering? What about Islam? What about all these other things? We're not covering that today. It's not that they aren't important questions. It's just we don't have the time to do that. So what we're going to do to begin with is just I'll let you know what the, four, the three areas really are that we're going to look at. The first area is how we can transition conversations from a sort of general, you know, political question or a conversation down the pub to something which moves into a more spiritual direction. How can we transition those conversations? Because other people do it. They'll transition it onto football. You know, I want to talk about football. Here it goes. You know, we're over there. You know, how did that happen? And I think sometimes as Christians, we just wait. We wait for it to come to the subject we would like to talk about. And sometimes it never does. And actually, there's ways in which we can transition conversations, which I think is a really good thing to do. And I I love doing that. Probably Peter knows that I do that. Um, and uh, we can learn from each other in doing that. Uh, and then secondly, we're going to look at how we can talk about what life was like before we were a Christian, how we came to faith, and what life's like now. And it's kind of AD, you know, BC, meeting Christ, AD kind of thing. So we'll do that. And then finally, we'll look at how we can explain simply the gospel. And the idea behind some of these is that we'll have opportunity to do this with each other. Okay, so there'll be a little bit of uh, chatting during the session as well. So should we start off with the first one, which is how we do these transitions in conversations. So you've got three scenarios, and you're given a sample transition, and then you've got to think up another transition. So shall I give you the first scenario? It says, you're out in nature talking to a friend, and you can't help noticing the beauty of the trees, the blue sky, and the sounds of birds, and you say to the other person, God must have quite an imagination to create all this beauty. Now, you probably, if you were to say those exact words, you'd kind of go, oh, it's just grabbing me by the throat. I can't do that. But you can say something that would be entirely you. Do you follow me? So you've now got the opportunity, perhaps in pairs. What could you write down there? What could you say that would transition the conversation from just, isn't it beautiful, to something that moves it in a more spiritual direction? You've now got two minutes. Go. <laughs> um, anybody else would like to share what they've put down? And I can bring the mic over. Go for it, The thing is, um, yeah, I, do. I was thinking, how close are you going to get? Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, it's not to negate any of this, but I also think we've, we can't just... It's got to come from God. I think if there's a situation where um, we'd like to bring the Lord into it, I don't think we should do it of ourselves. I think we should just send an arrow prayer up saying, Lord, what do I say? And just mm. kind of be led by the Holy Spirit in this. Mm. Like, um, I don't know, rather than coming from ourselves, I just, I just that, that's what I think. Yeah, I, that's kind of yeah no, that's helpful. Um, anybody else? Yes. Uh, Come on, Jamie, you've got one there. Come on. Yeah, uh, we were just kind of like saying... Um, Kind of like about intelligent design and stuff, like saying these trees just couldn't have just happened like a big bang and then blah, trees, mountains, whatever. Like we're saying that something must have created them because there's no way it could just happen on its own. Yeah, go on, Pete. Yeah, in some way that's where I kind of park company because I'm a great believer in evolution. However, <laughs> having said that, I might use something like this like, to the person. I say, I often wonder why I feel so calm and content in nature. How does it make you feel? It's oh, quite good, isn't it? Any other little nuggets? Oh, Catherine wasn't so sure about that one. Well, I do believe in evolution according to their kind, but I certainly don't believe that I evolved from a slime mould. Okay, okay. As, as a scientist. Okay, we're not doing evolution, but I'm glad we're. I'm glad we've. This will be our choices Sunday next time, by the sound of things. Anybody got anything else they like? Oh, Betty, come on. Um. I think sometimes we assume that somebody isn't a Christian. We really don't actually know. I never, I never forget when my son-in-law, one of my son-in-laws, was definitely you know, not a Christian as far as we knew, never came to church and he just didn't want to know. Um, he was very, very ill. had to have a lung removed with cancer. Uh, but he got better. And when he came out, I was staying with them so that I could look after the children while 
my daughter went to visit. Um, and I said to him, does it shake your faith in God, this happening to you, Steve? Not thinking he got any faith in God. He said, no, absolutely not. The contrary, he said. And I think sometimes it's not good to assume that somebody's yeah. completely mm. godless. And mm. <laughs> we just don't know. I think if mm. you have the confidence to be able to assume that perhaps they have some faith, yeah, yeah. it can help. It's probably better to assume they have got some faith to, than to assume they haven't, yeah. in a way. Um, so that's great. Well done. Um, I think the, the, the creation sort of angle or you know, the beauty of all that we see is a really easy, accessible one for most of us to use, to be honest. I absolutely love going on walks. I love yeah, taking my dog for a walk and so on. If you're that kind of a person, then actually getting a few thoughts that God can perhaps inspire by the Spirit at the time, having thought a little bit through that and perhaps even read some of the Psalms about the creation... You know, I'm sure God can use that. And, and when you're going for a walk, I mean, this morning I went for a walk with my dog. I met three people. In fact, I was worried I wasn't going to be back for the service. <laughs> met a neighbour I've been meaning to say hello to, the ones next door to the pub here, um, which was great. And, you know, there's lots of opportunities in this area, particularly in this beautiful area in which we live. OK, let's go on to the third one, um, which is this. You are now for some of you, this won't relate to you, but for others of you, this will be a, an easier one to relate to, perhaps. You are with some friends talking about popular TV shows, movies, news programs, songs or books, quite broad, huh? Um, and another transition might be another song I enjoy on the radio is Blah 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 by X Singer, who is a Christian and really has a lot to say about this. Or a book I've read is The Shack, and it was amazing. We had this amazing time at a recent... Do you, do you follow me? So the issue is something to do with the media, um, either a book, a show, um, a film that somehow brings in a Christian aspect. Two minutes, see what you could have as a transition. Go for it. Right, right we'll see how you got on. I know I haven't given you very much time. A um, bit more tricky. Who thought they related to this better than the creation one? Who, who could relate to this more than the creation one? Anybody? Yeah, you could. Anybody else? Can anybody relate to this more than the first one? Yeah. You felt you could? Yes. Okay, that means you're on. Right. Well, we came up with four ideas. One was Bruce Almighty, which apparently I've never seen. Uh, and apparently that is something. <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then we thought talking about Lion, Witch and Wardrobe, C.S. Lewis, and that's one of my favourites. Then both Adrian and I showed our age a little bit, but apparently Adrian, Radio 2, Alla Jones has a guest on on a Sunday morning talking about their... <laughs> their faith and something that I sometimes do when I'm driving in my car which I spend a lot of time doing is Radio 4 in the morning has thought for the day which often yeah. has something to talk about as well yeah. Yeah. so all four of those we thought would yeah. create yeah. an opportunity no that's good that's good I put it down somewhere so transition sorry yeah. in your words Mark. brilliant Jamie you had some as well so go for yeah, it um, <laughs> like I just my opinion is like hold on let's all listen to this shall we like, my opinion is, like, kind of uh, contemporary Christian stuff is as good as any secular stuff out there. So, like, if people are talking about music, I just say, oh, blah de blah is just as good as that. I think their music is just as good and stuff like that. Or I'd say, like, if we were talking about a band, I'd just be like, oh, they're not as good as blah de blah and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's good. I'd, I'd be stumped because I wouldn't know that many. I was um, I like, Do you like Mercy? Yeah, do you, do you like, band now <laughs> Jamie, do you like Mercy Me? No, oh, it's not, obviously not on the it's not on the Richter scale, is it? I love it. I sort of linked it to the first question, really. Yeah, we, link, we, Joe linked it to the first question. Um, I linked it to the first question because we love watching the nature programmes and it really opens the spirit. And then I would casually say, which I have done to lots of my friends, um, um, about God following, you know, science following its master in evolution. Like God created these things, you see. Uh, but um, they talk about the Big Bang, but actually evolution, um, if you put everything into a hat, that science would have to actually follow its master. Yeah, we won't go back to evolution, though, no. however much we want to. So, I mean, sometimes people go to... I mean, I've got a friend who runs a film club. He's a Baptist minister, and he runs a, a secular film club. And uh, he absolutely... He thinks that this is an area we totally miss. Um, and that if you think about it, most films deal with issues of love, hate forgiveness, revenge, you know, all these kinds of things. And the Bible's full of it. So actually, if you, 
say, you know, have you seen this film? Isn't it interesting? And you move the conversation away from um, mortgages or government cuts or whatever into an area which is a little bit, well, I think Pete was saying a bit more interesting um, and also far more thought-provoking and potentially far more sort of spirit empowered. Um, so that's great. So that's some transitions. Just a few thoughts about transitions so you don't, before we move on to the next sheet. First of all, I do think that sometimes as Christians we're very, very passive and we, we, we sometimes, I think it's good to be led by the Spirit, but sometimes we, we excuse ourselves from ever introducing anything spiritual by saying, well, I just don't think the Spirit led me. And in fact, the Spirit never leads that person because they never, ever transition a conversation. So if, I think there's a danger of being too pushy or being too passive. And probably each of us needs to just assess where we might be. The second thing is that um, my, I think one thing I sometimes do is I kind of go, oh, this is a great opportunity. Go for it. And you can sort of see the other person going, oh, no. You know, um, so remember, it's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. So you just say one thing and see how they respond. If they do a shutdown on it, then probably they're not going to listen to anything more. So just move the conversation elsewhere. But if they're interested, if they move towards it, then obviously you can explore further. Fairly, fairly obvious point, but sometimes, you know, if we've not had a chance to speak to somebody about the Lord for six months and it looks like they may be a possibility, we can be like a dog with a bone, which may not be as helpful as we might think. Um, and then also don't feel you need to present the whole gospel in one go. You know, the kind of thing... <laughs> You know, unless I've said we're all sinners, we must repent of our sins, that Jesus Christ died, rose again, and the Holy Spirit came to make it. We've got to get the whole thing in. You know, if we don't get the whole thing in, it's nothing's happened. Um, be happy just to mention one thing, um, particularly if you've got a friendship um, that can enable you to mention the other things later. Unless, of course, you're on a plane on a long haul journey, in which case, go for it, you know. <laughs> OK, on to the next page. And we come to our story. Um, and you've got, on the left-hand side, Paul, the Apostle Paul's story. I hope this doesn't in intimidate you. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, well, he had a story, didn't he? <laughs> when it comes to my story, it seems so much less. So let's have a quick look at the Apostle Paul. We've got some quotes from Acts 26. Before he met Christ, he quotes himself as saying, I did all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus. Now, that may not be our story, but what was life like before we met Jesus? I mean, some of us sometimes think, oh, I wish I was on drugs and had all those things so I could make it sound more dramatic. But obviously it was good that we weren't on drugs necessarily. So anyway, there's a before Christ moment. And what was life like then? And try to think a little bit about that. Then there's as we met Christ. Now, obviously, Paul had a very particular meeting, didn't he? Um, and here's the quote. As I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven and heard a voice. Um, I think two things to say about that is that actually sometimes we do experience a sense that God is speaking to us. Sometimes we do expense, experience physical things, but we often feel embarrassed to mention them, if that makes any sense. I've been amazed at people in this church who don't yet have a faith, who will say to me, uh, when I come into this place, I feel quite emotional and often I well up in tears. Do you, do you follow me? That's quite significant, really. You may say, well, that sounds a bit sad. <laughs> but if that's somebody's experience of as they started to encounter Christ, it's worth saying. People can't say, oh, I bet it didn't happen to you. You've just said it. Well, why would they disagree with you? Do, you? do you sort of mean? So I think sometimes we downplay what might be described as emotional or spiritual or supernatural encounters. Um, I don't know quite why, really, because... In some ways, they're, they're quite enticing for a world which seems to love things. At our men's group on Thursday, we had a, a new chap there, a nice guy, wasn't he? Was he John, wasn't he? And um, he was adamant that he did not believe in God. And I thought, oh, God, this is obviously a very sceptical person of anything that is spiritual or anything like that. Um, and then, <laughs> then he comes out and says, I believe in ghosts. And I thought he was joking. I was like, <laughs> you know, no, he's absolutely. And his mum believes in ghosts and they into their horoscope and so these are people who aren't they're looking if you like for phenomenon do you, do you know what I mean and I suspect that we obviously be only one evening we hope he'll come back again um, and it'd be fascinating to explore that more you know why, why is he so skeptical about God and so believing in ghosts 
I said, have you ever... I, th- I, th- I thought, have you ever met a ghost? No. I thought, well, why... You know, anyway, there we go. <laughs> Get the kind of idea. So there's the before Christ, there's the meeting Christ, and then there's the after you've met Christ. And Paul describes this in Acts 26. So then I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. He then actually goes and commits himself to spread the good news of Jesus to those he met, he meets. So that's Paul's experience. And he then had a concluding concluding question to other people. Do you believe the prophets? He actually then, from that encounter, had a question that he delivered. So you can guess what's coming next, can't you? Um, We've got to explore before Christ, how we met Christ, and after Christ. Now, some of you may say, oh, Malcolm, it's not that simple for me. I kind of went through this transition and whatever. Um, If before Christ is difficult, don't worry about before Christ. Just do the met Christ, what it means to you to meet Christ, and the after Christ. Do you see what I mean? Um, Now, I've got a few questions, because you've got six questions there. And these are the said questions, which don't feel you've got to stick to these. But before you were a Christian, what was your spiritual background? You know, my mum and dad were materialists, basically. That was my spiritual background. They had a little bit of residual sp- um, religiosity. You ought to go to church. That was my spiritual background. you see what I mean? Now, what was your spiritual background? Write it down. That's part of your story. Do you see what I mean? Next question would be, um, before Christ, what was the cause of you beginning to consider the Christian faith? I met this person and I couldn't just refute what they were saying because of the quality of their life or whatever it might be. So what was it that triggered your interest? Now, going through these stages is very important because often our spiritual background, our causes for considering looking into Christ, will sometimes mirror what the person we're we're speaking to. Well, certainly once they've spoken to a few Christians, they may well find that there's a similar background they've got to the person they're speaking to. And then they'll realise that they could follow this route as well. Do you see what I mean? So then into onto meeting Christ. How do we meet Christ? What caused you to receive Christ? I was at this meeting down at Latimer Park. They said, put your hand up. And I went to the front. I was at a baptism service or I was talking to a friend and he challenged me. And I thought, yes, I do want to meet Christ. And we prayed. Whatever it is, what was it that caused you to meet Christ? <coughs> And then how did you receive Christ? What actually happened? So was there, were there you know, suddenly the sound of angels singing all around you? Or did you just say the prayer and nothing seemed to happen? And actually then over a period of time you started to have a greater assurance or you said the prayer or you, you felt you, you invited Christ. You were sitting at the bottom of your bed and you, sa- you said, Lord, you know, please come in. And then you had an immediate experience. What was that immediate experience? <coughs> Write it down. Say what it was like. So anyway, that's the first two. I'll leave that up in a minute, but I'll just go on to the last one. After Christ, how did your life change? What's changed? That's quite important because a lot of people are sceptical about the historic historicity of Jesus. They're sceptical about the church, but they cannot really be that sceptical about you and your testimony. So what changed? What was good about it, particularly? <laughs> and lastly, were there any other benefits? Sounds like some kind of travel brochure, doesn't it, or something? Get the kind of idea? Okay, stop where you've got to. And uh, I hope you found it helpful just just to think about it. Because often we don't think about these things in a systematic way. Um, And when you then have a conversation with somebody, and perhaps you might even be able to see that they've got a similar situation that you had, you can say, well, actually, you know, I was a bit like that as well. But then, you know, I became a Christian and found that this has really changed. Do you know what I mean? So that, that can be quite nice if you can actually say, well, that's what I was like before. It's, it's terrible. It's like some advert, isn't it? Before and after, you know. But this is, I mean, a lot of people today, particularly in a sceptical society, they're, quite, they're not really that, a lot of people aren't that interested in whether something is true or not. I mean, I, I think it's really important that the Christian faith is true. It actually happened. It's based upon history. But a lot of people aren't that worried. They'll say, well, if it works for you, that's great. Or that's great if it's a nice experience for you, or whatever. Um, so, so actually, hearing that something actually worked for somebody is actually very important for people particularly in a world where they advertise that the church doesn't work. The church messes up people's lives. It does all these horrible things, you know what I mean? And ministers doing dodgy things and 
whether they be church ministers or government ministers. Um, do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of a problem. We've got to get over that. And so our personal testimony is often a very, very powerful tool in that respect. One thing which I think we often fail to do, because if we've been a Christian for a while, is, is kind of the water we swim in, and we don't see it as particularly special. And then you, like Dawn and I went out for, um, to dinner with a couple, two or three couples last night. Um, one, one man who was there, definitely not a Christian, and I just, as I came away, I, the conversation kept on going to places. I just thought, why are we going there? You, and of course, but if, if you're trying to puff yourself up and push other people down, of course you go there. Do you, do you know what I mean? Whereas if we are utterly loved and accepted in God, we don't have to push anybody down. Mm. And do you know what I mean? And, and sometimes we don't realise that. You know, we, this is the water we swim in and we just don't realise how good it is and how fresh it is and how healthy it is. Um, until perhaps we mix with more with other people. I'm not saying we're perfect, but you know. Anyway, there we go. Um, last thing, if that's okay, do take that away with you and work on it if you know you need to work on it. And if, you've, if it's a bit of an opening, you know, so you think, wow, I can do some stuff. I didn't realise. Fantastic. May God bless you as, you as you do move forward in faith. Last thing is just how do you explain the Christian faith to somebody? Um, now, if you are at a pub or at a restaurant and something and you've got a napkin... Um, you could do it using the bridge diagram. You've probably seen it before, but let me quickly show you how you might do it. Okay, here's a picture. You say, well, you know, in the beginning, God created the world and human beings and God were close. They related to each other well. But sadly, we blew it and we wanted to go our own way and we got cut off from God. So we're each in our own corners and we kind of knew something wasn't right, so we kept on trying to reach out to God in the best way we could. Perhaps we tried to be particularly good for a day. But every time we made any kind of efforts, it just didn't seem to be enough. And um, the consequences of all this, sadly, was that human beings don't live forever, which, of course, you know. And the consequences are that we all die. And um, God, of course, didn't like that. He wanted to relate to us as well. And so he had to find a way that would join us back to himself. And he had to do something himself that we couldn't do for ourselves. And so he did something in his son by dying on a cross himself, God dying on a cross. Death itself was defeated <coughs> by God dying and a bridge was put in place between us and God. And that's why the cross is such a central feature of the Christian faith. So that no longer did we have to continue to fail in our endeavour to come to God. No longer did we have to face the certainty of death and oblivion thereafter. What happened because of the cross was that we found a way back to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why Christians think the cross is so, so very, very important. Now, I haven't practised this very much. You probably can tell by the way I did it. But what they suggest, or what's suggested here, is that you practice doing this. You practice actually telling the story of how the cross brings us back to God. And you've got the words helpfully set out there for you. Now, it may not be the most obvious thing to actually practice, but it's not a bad thing to do, is it? Because you, you could actually do that pretty quickly, couldn't you? In a pub, you could just say, well, let me just, you know, you want to know about the Christian faith? Let me just tell you about it. Here it is. Um, the basics of the Christian faith. There are a number of other ways of doing it. If you're somebody who's really into the Bible in a big way, you could use something called the Roman way. Has anybody heard that? Uh, heard of the Roman way? It's not in your notes. So you might want to just jot this down if you fancy just checking it out afterwards. Um, anybody got a Bible with them? Yeah. Call yourselves Christians? No. <laughs> um, can somebody look up these three verses in Romans and read them out to us? So this is called the Roman way. And if you've got somebody who's literary rather than visual, if you've got a very creative person, use the, the bridge diagram. If you've got somebody who likes words, then if you look up Romans 3.23, it says, we all of us had sinned, fallen short of the glory of God, but we didn't just stay like that. Romans 6.23, death, or if we put our trust in Jesus, eternal life, and then 10.13, so you could actually go through the book of Romans with these three verses and just use those three verses to explain the basics of the gospel, which would be quite neat. But you have got to remember those three. So you could have on your business card or something, 
you could write them on the back. Make sure you, well, you're supposed to, as I say, make sure you don't give it to somebody, but I suppose it's fine if you do. Um, absolutely. So, uh, um, and then there's other ones. I mean, you've got to choose one which you kind of think you can remember and won't get confused by. Um, this is a nice, easy one. If you're talking about baptism, believe plus receive, if I can write it, okay, and then become. As we believe and receive, we then become a child of God. Um, uh, or another one is, God, we, uh, God loves us, we blew it, Christ paid for it, we must receive it. Same kind of thing, I guess. Finally, and I realise that coffee is calling us, the last sheet you've got here. If you're, dealing, if you're talking to somebody who's very, very religious, you know, they, they feel they ought to do this, ought to do that, must do this, they're a very good person, all that kind of stuff, get the kind of person in mind, then this is really powerful. Um, religion is all about what we do and the Christianity, real Christianity, a living relationship with Jesus is all about what God has done. Yeah? And so you can actually say, well, yeah, often I, we do find ourselves saying, well, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, we've got to do the other. And that's really what I would call religion. If you look at the Pharisees and that in the Bible, that's what they were doing. And God said that wasn't enough. And so he did something that we couldn't do for ourselves. And so true Christianity is all about what God has done. And then you talk about what God has done and what it's achieved. Do you get that kind of idea? So I think that's quite powerful, that one. Um, anyway, have a read of it and do take these away. And I hope you'll find them really, really helpful. Just to summarize them, and I'll say a short prayer. Um, the, greatest, the greatest impact um, in people's lives is the testimony, the personal testimony of the person and the people that you know, your neighbours, your family, your friends. And uh, I think spending a bit of time like this is really helpful in just sharpening our ability to be able to share that with others graciously and lovingly. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the lovely work you do in our lives. Um, thank you for saving us. Thank you that once we were lost, facing the assurance, of the guarantee of death and and not knowing you for eternity. And now you've brought us home, and there is a place for each one of us for eternity with you. We thank you for your present, um, present relationship we share with you by the Holy Spirit, and we pray that this will become more and more vivid, more and more real and exciting. And we pray that this testimony will lead many others to a living and saving knowledge of you. And I pray for each one of my brothers and sisters here, that you would strengthen them by your spirit in their inner person, that they would know Christ and the joy of serving him. Amen.